Hello everyone and welcome back to your daily government and financial news update. In today's video, we'll be discussing Donald Trump's Twitter account finally being unbanned by the new CEO, Elon Musk. We also discuss the millions of dollars in stimulus checks still going out through the end of this year. And finally, we also go over some updates in the stock market and Bitcoin. Now, as always, I am definitely interested in hearing your thoughts on everything, and I wanted to quickly thank everyone for giving my videos likes and sharing them, as that certainly helps push these videos out to other people like you. Okay, so Donald Trump's Twitter account was finally reinstated after former CEO Jack Dorsey and his employees found him to be too dangerous to the platform in the world, apparently, claiming he led an insurrection against the United States of America. Those tweets, you ask? Well, just going over the last five, he wrote, To all those who have asked, I will not be going to the inauguration on January 20th. The 75 million great American patriots who voted for me, America first and make America great again, will have a giant voice long into the future. They will not be disrespected or treated unfairly in any way, shape, or form. I am asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful. No violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order. Respect the law and our great men and women in blue. Thank you. And finally, please support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. Now, just from looking at those tweets alone that he supposedly was banned from, I guess, it's really hard seeing a person who wanted people to break into the Capitol building and potentially put other lives at stake. Could he have done more to prevent the people there from acting in violence? Well, I guess it's arguable that he could have. Maybe he Maybe he couldn't have had the speech, for instance, or something like that. But is he alone responsible for their acts? Is Trump responsible for the acts of a handful of other adults making the terrible, terrible decision to invade the Capitol that day and make fools of themselves, and of course our nation as well, which later led to their arrest and time in prison? I mean, I, I just don't see it. I mean, you can make the case that he tried rallying up his base, making claims of voter fraud and whatnot, and whether or not you believe cities and states commit voter fraud is completely up to you. I've seen both Republicans and Democrats claim the other side is cheating. But at the end of the day, we and we alone need to be responsible for our own actions. So Trump is back on Twitter and he really never should have been removed, at least in my opinion. Freedom of speech is extremely important, whether it's coming from a Republican, a Democrat, an independent or whoever else. Obviously, you do have to draw the line at some point, but attempting to censor a person really isn't all that effective anyways. Now, in the end, this really doesn't mean that much anyways, at least for Trump's chances in the next election. What it does do, at least, is it sends a clear message that the new Twitter won't seek out to silence anyone or allow one group of people to decide what's a truth or what's a lie. The most important thing is to have a reasonable discussion on each topic, not just to immediately flag, post, and ban people for misinformation, something that often gets skewed and rigged based on one's personal biases. So, for instance, I could sit here and say that the rising gas prices is completely Biden's fault. I could get flagged for misinformation because one person gets to decide what's truth and what's a lie. And then another person could say that the higher gas prices is because of the war in Ukraine and Russia, or it's because it's Trump's fault and their post may not get flagged for misinformation because there's one group of people deciding what's truth and what's a lie. And that's going to be based on their own personal biases. So what would be better is just allow anyone to post anything, of course, within reason. And then after that, allow for there to be a discussion to take place so people could see the discussion and then make up their own mind, maybe what's truth and what's a lie from there. Now, Trump said that even being unbanned, it's not really going to make a difference for him. Right now, he is posting on Truth Social alone. He said he's not going to return to Twitter. Apparently, he thinks there's a huge issue with Twitter and all the fake bot accounts on there. So he's just going to stay on his Truth Social. He's not going to return to Twitter anyways. So in the end, the unbanning of his account really doesn't matter. Maybe if he becomes president once again, he will return to Twitter. But right now, he says that he's just going to stay on Truth Social. But of course, as always, I am curious what all of you guys think. Do you believe that President Trump's account should be reinstated and why or why not? Now, moving into some news regarding stimulus checks, South Carolina is currently sending out stimulus checks worth up to $800. Now, the deadline to file your taxes to claim this money has unfortunately passed as that was on October 17th. 
However, in some recent guidance by the state's Department of Revenue, you can still get the payment as long as you file an extension, but you won't receive it until March of next year. This, of course, is only if you get your return filed by February 15th of next year. Now, other than those stimulus checks, residents of Evanston, Illinois started receiving their monthly payments of $500. These payments are going to roll out every single month for an entire year, so in total that is going to be $6,000. And this is in part of a universal basic income program, which should impact around 150 households. So to be eligible for these payments, you must obviously live in Evanston and have an income at or below 250% of the federal poverty line and fit into at least one of the following categories. So these categories, you just have to fall into one of them. The first being being an adult between 18 to 24 years of age, or you can be an adult at least 62 years or older, or finally, you can be an undocumented community member. So those payments are definitely going to be helpful. I can only imagine, I mean, for many families, that amount can at least pick up a good chunk of the rent each month. So if your rent is at say $1,400, the $500 you're receiving each month will bring your rent down to $900. Now over in Massachusetts, they're continuing to send out relief payments. For these, you wouldn't need to have a tax liability. So basically, you would have needed to have earned an income and paid taxes into the state of Massachusetts. So in total, you will be receiving 14% of what you paid in out of your 2021 state income tax liability, which means that if you paid $1,000 in state taxes, you would be eligible to receive $140 back. If you paid $100 in taxes, you would be eligible to receive a whopping $14. It is being noted that every single week, the state will be sending out 1 million checks and this is going to be until everyone receives their payment. For others, it is being said that the refunds will be issued via direct deposit and should be labeled as Mass T Tax RFD. The states of New Mexico and Idaho are also continuing to send out stimulus checks to certain residents of their state. So in New Mexico, for example, low income residents are eligible to receive checks worth at least $400 and then over in Idaho, individuals will receive $300, while joint filers, of course, will be eligible to receive double that amount at $600. Now, quickly moving into some money news, the markets are closed this week, but just looking a bit ahead into the future, things are really going to depend a lot on what the Fed decides to do in their final meeting held on December 13th through 14th. Interestingly enough, inflation data for the month of November will also be coming out on December 13th, so they'll have that information to digest, in addition to the better than expected progress on inflation for the month of October. And although inflation slowed a good bit in the last report, Fed officials were pretty quick to downplay the success, saying that we still have a long way to go. And this, of course, is very true, being that we're currently seeing inflation at 7.7% year over year, a number that is much higher than our 2% target. So if we see another good sized rate hike in December, that's say like half a percentage point, that could cause more downwards pressure in the market. The good news is of course, at least historically speaking, the S&P 500 typically performs its best from October through February, and it fares especially well six months after each midterm election year. So historically speaking, at least, we could see some very good things to come. Now, year to date, the major indexes are having a really, really bad year. The S&P 500 is currently down 17.33% year to date. The Dow Jones is down by 7.76% after making some pretty good strides of late. And the Nasdaq is really just having the worst year of them all with tech stocks getting hit the hardest down by nearly 30%. Now, with that said, if you would like to receive up to 12 free stocks in $5 worth of Bitcoin, in the comment section below, I will leave a link where you can receive just that from my partner in Webull. And even if you don't feel like investing at this time for whatever reason, once you receive the free stocks, what you can always do is just sell them for what they're worth and then transfer that money right back to your bank account. So in total, you should be receiving a value of at least $50 or more. Some people have actually received over $3,000 in the past. So really, you can think of this as just some free extra money with just a few minutes of work. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the content in today's video and you would like to see more like it, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and also ring the notification bell. That way, you will be the very first to be notified when I do release future videos. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day ahead, and I'll see you in the next video.